Hey Poopy is looking for you and your poo. Do you have a question, story, comment, or fart noise you want to share? You can email us at heypoopypodcast at gmail.com. Or call us at the new Hey Poopy hotline, 203-998-5579. Can't wait to hear from you. Hey Poopy, how you doing? Hey Poopy, how you doing? I'm a, you know, I'm just, you know, trying to find a place with like-minded people to talk about like-minded things about me or about poop and stuff. Hey Poopy, how you doing? Hey Poopy, how you doing? Oh man, what's this right here? Is this, is this a podcast about poop? And now, the Hey Poopy Podcast with Dave and Ellen. Hi, everybody. We are back on Dump Day. Hey, everybody. This is the Hey Poopy Podcast with... Dave. And Ellen. And this is episode 91, but it'll always be number 2 to us, our favorite number. And... We are here with very, very special guest, Kim from Flush, who I just listened to two of her talks, one on toilets and one on sewers, and I am so excited to have such an expert with us. Yes, welcome to the show. Thanks, happy to be here. And Kim, before we go into exactly who you are and what Flush is, we like to go into how have your poos been? So how have you been pooping recently? Uh, COVID's been really great for my bowels, gotta <laughs> oh, say. Nice. Can you explain in Bristol stool chart terms? Uh, I would say probably uh, straight down the middle. It kind of varies depending on the day, but it's it's pretty pretty solid for the most part. Uh, my body is saying, wow, I really like not eating out, so you should do that <laughs> all the time. <laughs> my boyfriend the first, like, what, six to eight weeks of quarantine he was eating only home cooked meals and then when he finally ate some takeout his system was not doing well at all like yeah it's crazy what they put in takeout oh, yeah. food restaurant food Completely. yeah totally my partner and i now just we're, we're you know <laughs> defaulting to, to homemade food just because both of us feel like wow i don't i don't feel like shit today so Let's keep doing that thing and repeating it. Completely. Totally. I agree. I just hate when it gets to the point where I just want to, I sometimes I get sick of cooking. But I mean, still, cooking at home is way better for you. I mean, um, worst case situation, I make eggs. Yeah. <laughs> it's a meal. <laughs> True. Simple and fast. Mm-hmm. And um, what about you, Dave? Um, my poops are actually on the looser side today. I had like a number six. I don't know what was going on there Whoa. on the Bristol stool chart. Um, I made some amazing zucchini bread so i probably ate a little too much of that actually mm. maybe all the uh sugar that was in that i don't know but uh it was delicious and i paid the price this morning <laughs> <laughs> i love zucchini bread. yeah it was so good i was really really happy it made a lot too so i wish i could virtually just shove it to my computer uh-huh. so you guys can try some <laughs> but it's pretty good i'm gonna toot my own horn <laughs> <laughs> Um, I kind of have an epic check-in, so hold on for a second, like always. Um, one, I did combo for the first time in like six months last week. If for those of you who don't know what combo is, it's when they put medicinal frog poison uh, burned into your skin and you get violently sick. It's kind of like bee sting therapy. I do it for my Lyme disease. And as I've talked about in previous episodes when I did combo I you throw up a lot and sometimes poop and when I did it last week while I was throwing up I was ripping the loudest farts ever (laughs) and I was positive (laughs) that they were not just farts and I was like oh my god I finally am pooping my pants during this I can't believe it and then I didn't poop my pants, but I had to, like, right right when she wiped off the poison off my body, um, I rushed into the bathroom and pooped twice. So I did a lot of purging. It was very, very successful. Um, and then la- yesterday, I actually pooped five times, all Bristol oh Fours. Oh, God. Wow. Con- yeah, yeah, just constantly going. Go- I don't know what was in my – oh, no, I do know it's in my system. I ate shrooms. Two nights ago, <laughs> and I think the shrooms were just pushing out all the pushing everything out the the stuff in my system. But it didn't give me diarrhea. Very healthy. 
And I had a healthy poop earlier today. So I've been wow. doing some good, good pooping. You're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we haven't talked in a while, so I have to epically check in yeah, with no, that was all the bowels. That was a really good one. <laughs> you're like so frog well, five po- times in one day that's like a that's a, yeah. that's a record five so it's basically frog poison and mushrooms if you're having any kind of poop <laughs> problems just do that and you'll be fine <laughs> is the takeaway if you had hit six if you had hit one more you would probably had to have been checked out to see if you have like parasites or something <laughs> <laughs> no but they're all solid like if, i would think parasites would give me more like um like bristol six or seven i yeah think- that's fair. So Maybe I had parasites. Were like, they were like very solid, but they weren't huge poops. But they were like, like solid, easy go, no push, no wipe. Oh, except for one of the times I pooped yesterday, I started sneezing while I was on the toilet, and that actually hurt my butthole for like an hour afterwards. <laughs> so oh. Don't sneeze while pooping because you're clenching and releasing at yeah. the same time. Yeah, There's a lot of going mm-hmm. on. It felt like somebody punched me in the butthole for like an hour <laughs> after that. I was like, oh, that was a bad idea, but it wasn't like I could control a sneeze, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of activity going on over your place. <laughs> a lot of activity. <laughs> I'm keeping it real, people. You are, you are, you are. Kim's like a little too real. real. (laughs) No, I'm joking. Kim's like, I'm here to talk about toilets, not about (laughs) food. I said nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So now that we've checked in, Kim, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with flush and toilets and sewers and all that fun stuff. Sure. Yeah. So I'm Kim and I'm a water and sanitation consultant, which means that usually I go overseas when we're allowed to travel um, and work in other countries and help people get access to clean water and safe toilets. Um, I'm also the founder of Flush, which is my company that lets me do the fun education classes for the public about sanitation and hygiene specifically. Um, And also we do advisory services um, about you know, the management stuff that comes into managing systems that include toilets. Um, so that's me. I started, my my story goes back a wise. Um, so I, I was a little girl with a lot of GI issues and I was always in the bathroom. And I, um, the family has this joke that when I was about seven or eight, I was called the inspector because when we would go to restaurants before we would sit down, I would go check out the toilets and make sure they were, you know, up to my personal code. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and You're then like, I, I can't let food in unless I know I can let food out. Yeah. yeah. And, and knowing that at some point I'd probably have to make a run for it. And, um, you know, <laughs> later on got diagnosed with celiac and IBS and probably something else that they're not sure about. Um, Mm -hmm. and then I, you know, got into my career and tried to figure out what was my jam and realized that, you know, um, about 4 billion people in the world don't have reliable access to toilets. And to me, that was just this appalling idea that there are people out there who might have the same issues as me and are just shit out of luck. So I Hmm. uh, got into it, but also found that, um, you know, the world of sanitation in other countries, the people managing it often um, don't uh, do a good job telling stories and talking about it. Um, so, you know, a lot of people in the world don't know that there are toilet issues. So I was like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a chatty person. I, and I, you know, was a performance kid. So I'll, I'll just make some classes and talk about toilets and, and people keep showing up. So that's how I got into this. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it really is like, you just like made your own career, which is great, which is, <laughs> which is the dream. Like you just kind of develop your own thing. That's, that's, I think it's commendable. It's amazing. Thanks. Well, my my bank account doesn't agree with you, but <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we're I, I'm with you on that too. But uh, at least you're doing what you love, right? Yeah, that's true. So toilet right. talk, man. The money, the money will come. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing, though. And you've been doing this. I'm sorry. Wait, when did you start Flush? What was the year? I started Flush officially about two years ago. So, but I started teaching my classes about four years ago, oh. um, and they got popular. So, I, I'm normally in New York City, and they got popular enough in the city people were interested in doing my own my classes for themselves. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa! Like, that's my baby. Like, hold on, you're not just gonna go do the thing. So, I, I made 
flush is a way to kind of house my classes and uh, make them more formal in the sense of, you know, you pay the company, not me. Yeah. Um, so that's how, that's how it started. Um, it's all pretty, the, the, the play by play is not like, I just was like, and today I'm going to start a company. (laughs) (laughs) And did you go to school for like sanitation sewer? Like, how did you learn all this stuff? Yeah. Well, my, my first degree, my undergrad was a business degree. So, and I was going into entertainment as like a movie producer. Uh, oh. That didn't happen. But <laughs> what ended up happening is I went and got a master's in public administration and um, I was put on a, a consulting team for school to work on a water and sanitation project. And it was like the big light bulb went off and I was like, oh, my life makes sense now. <laughs> so I got, I got into it that way. But then I ended up doing a second master's specializing in sanitation and, and like water resources. So I did end up specializing, but I didn't start specialized. Right. We both took your class, or I not took your class, I watched that, um, the sewer talk online. And I was, mm-hmm. we, Ellen and I were both chatting back and forth. This is crazy. Like all the, yeah. all the fun facts and everything. So, and I loved how it was organized. All the, I mean, I thought it was, it was great. It was fantastic. Thank yeah. you. I feel like your, both of your talks were an hour and a half long, but I feel like I could keep you for about 10 hours and <laughs> I'm not going to, but the knowledge you. that you spilled on us was incredible. And <laughs> if anybody has questions after this episode, you should most definitely follow Kim and watch one of her classes because even she, there was an online one and you could literally chat and ask questions in the chat box, which I really loved. It was really cool. Yeah, very thanks. Cool. Yeah, and I, I have more classes coming, so I have one on public toilets go, that's going to show up oh, probably next month. Thank you. For Ooh, that. please email us. Mm-hmm. I want I will. front row. <laughs> public toilets. You all are... get the same row online, man. That's true. <laughs> We're all front row. Yeah, public toilets. That's like my oh god. There's just listen in this city anyway. It's like it's just horrible yeah. situations here. Yeah, so I'm dying to hear this little talk. That'll be fun. <laughs> And I, I probably do a social justice like uh, tilt to it just because a lot of the public toilet issues are very like, you know, there's racism and then there's like enablism mm-hmm. and then there's like genderism, like all of the isms and you're like packed into one topic. Yeah. So yeah. I might I might do it that way and, and let people kind of be angry for an hour and a half, I guess. <laughs> Plus homelessness, homelessness and, yeah, and, and like how Europe has those self-cleaning toilets, but New York has like nothing besides yeah. Starbucks. It's like. And like our country is so backwards, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially for something that pertains to people that people do like all the time. Like everybody poops, <laughs> and not everybody's yeah. in the same class structure. It's just so it's just it's kind of a mess. I mean, in New York, yep. it's just, just like a nightmare. But I yeah. imagine it's like that everywhere across the U.S. So. Amen. It really is. There's Before the pandemic back started. Back. Yeah, before the pandemic started, Dave and I were going to go to some of the best toilets in New York, public ones, and some of the subway ones to compare mm. notes. AKA the worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't need to say that out loud. Yeah. We all got the subway was going to be the worst. Just, uh, yeah. Although there was, there's an article the Times did uh, that they, I forgot the station now, but there was one public subway station that was supposed to be really, really nice. The rest were just as you would as you would think. Well, not. I mean, okay. For for the New York City subway system, like, <laughs> okay is like the Cadillac. It was the like Ritz Carlton of the subway. Exactly. Bathrooms. Yes. <laughs> Got it. But on normal standards, it'd probably just be like just barely subpar. Like an IHOP, yeah. maybe. <laughs> or maybe a Waffle House. <laughs> okay. Not not to call out any any bathroom experiences I've had in my childhood. <laughs> Yeah, I've had. Well, some... We can call them all out. This is a very safe space on this podcast yeah, yeah. to call out the worst of I've the worst. Some really... <laughs> I've been in some really horrible toilets, so yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Dave almost pooped in the C O C B D B toilet. Oh, yeah. And man. I don't know if you saw. There was like a meme going around at the beginning of COVID. Like, if you pooped, it used this bathroom. You are immune to COVID. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, you can Google what the CBGB's bathroom looked like. It. Oh yeah, it's scary. Yeah, it is. It's infamous for. It was like oh, a yeah. rite of passage. Yeah, it was. It was a nightmare. So, I mean, <laughs> I didn't use. I used the ladies' room next door because <laughs> um, I just couldn't do it. But uh, you know. 
Which again, they shouldn't even be gendered. It's just like it should be a bathroom. Right. It just makes no sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. But in that, you know, in back in the day, they had you know men, women. But uh, yeah, horrible bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Do not recommend. No, no. <laughs> Talking about let back in the day, let's go into it because Kim has the knowledge. Like I don't even think we need to ask you our regular questions because no. the amount of knowledge you're going to spill on everybody is is worth it but yeah so from what i remember from your talk that the toilet was started in the third to second bc yeah it so we think we think it probably started about five to six thousand years ago um once you start seeing a lot of civilizations settling down from being um more hunter-gatherer nomadic and to being you know more agrarian and people clumping together so you know there's talks about it, it was probably started in mesopotamia in like maybe the third millennium bc but they probably had um, toilets that probably have just disappeared over time with biodegradable stuff. Yeah. Um, but we know that we've seen um, sewer systems or, you know, some kind of drainage system in the Indus Valley um, around that time with the civilization in Mohenjo-Daro, um, which is between Pakistan and India. And there's also uh, cesspits that they found in a community in Scarabre in, in Scotland. So we know that it started existing and in kind of different areas of the world. Um, so we know we know that definitely there's a sentiment of, you know, cleanliness that kind of started evolving. There's, you know, evolutionarily speaking, you know, this disgust we have often for poo is quite natural because you don't eat your poo because you're disgusted by it, so you won't die. So yes. there is this, this thing that's happening where you start seeing civilizations having more people nearby and trying to find ways to not disgust each other and keep their environments cleaner. So you definitely see it around then. Um, you know, just complete disclaimer I like to give is like I'm not a I'm not a you know uh, trained historian or an archaeologist, but like from what I've read and what I've tried to pull out, that's really when it seems the sweet spot was. Um, and maybe, you know, a few thousand years before, but it's unclear a little bit. Um, so it did start and, and you see it um, evolving slowly but surely over time in different parts of the world. You know, sometimes they use cesspits, um, which are just basically holes in the ground yeah. um, that are not lined. It's just you dig a hole, that's a cesspit. Um, and then you have, you know, a sewer system kind of place where, you know, it could be opened or closed. But it's just basically um, some kind of some kind of underground digged uh canal or system that has the water flowing things from one place to somewhere else. So you definitely see that showing up in different places. We see it in Vietnam, um, you know, not so long after we start seeing it in different in like Scotland and in Pakistan and Vietnam's not very close to any of those places. Um, and, and all over the place. I, I think that's one of the coolest things about toilets is that they're so ubiquitous. And yet at the same time, you know, it's really kind of unclear in some sense what it looked like in a lot of places just because it's not well documented and in a lot of history people have really glazed over this thing that like we all have had to shit all the time always since we became amoebas probably um but everyone's like ew i don't want to i don't want to study the thing so i think we're gonna also probably find more more things like this about our past um, as people start opening up to this idea that like toilets are a thing they're really important they tell us a lot about a civilization Completely. And when you don't have access to a toilet, it's just like, oh my God, it's, it makes a world of difference. I mean, it really, really it, does. Just, it just, it does. Like you don't think about it when you're, you know, the way this, this country, especially like you just brought up, like there's a toilet everywhere. But mm-hmm. I mean, here it's like some places in the world, just, you know, you don't have that. It's like, it's a disease, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. without the proper sewer system and a proper toilet, we have more disease and yep. Yeah, it's it's one of the key ways people get sick is when someone doesn't have access to a toilet to safely contain their poo or they don't have a way to wash their hands afterwards. I mean, we talk about E. coli outbreaks um, with lettuce and spinach, and sometimes that's because, you know, farmers or farmhands may not have toilets in the field and they go outside and no one bothered to wash the lettuce or whatever. Um, Wait, so the E. coli, I was thinking that the E. coli from spinach came from a dirty animal but it's mostly from a dirty human it so do i have 
hardcore data right now to say how much is one way or the other. I don't. But I mean, we know that, you know, we have a lot of E. coli in our guts. That's something that's important to us. Um, And a lot of food poisoning is people passing their their own E. coli to each other and not washing their hands. So a lot of. Yeah. So there's just a lot of, you know, uh, easily transmitted, we call them pathogens, you know, to different people just by not washing our hands or people pooing in fields. You know, I was talking to this woman in Florida a few weeks ago and she was talking about how she was working as in like environmental health and we're seeing outbreaks because there were not enough toilets for the farm hands a while back. So wow. it happens and sometimes it is animal poo and sometimes it's human poo gone awry. Wow. Gonna ride, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna run amok. <laughs> wow. Even villainous, evil and villainous. Yeah, I mean, ugh. You never you never think about that. But yeah. Remember wash your wash your food, people. <laughs> and your hands. And your hands. Yes. We've learned that with COVID, but we mm-hmm. need it. Very important. Um, also talking about like vintage poo. Like you, we were taught, you said something about moats being around castles, which blew my mind because as a little girl, I was like, oh, princesses in a castle and a moat is where like the dragon lives and it's so fantasyful. But you were like, no, a moat was probably the sewer. Yeah, I mean, it, a lot of it was like a defense, right? You you had a cesspit around your castle and first of all, it kept your inside castle clean. But it made it so people were probably more um, less inclined to want to seize your castle if it was raging with, you know, flies and maggots oh, and God. Oh, oh. terrible. Oh, the so, smell. <laughs> and the smell. And, and sometimes they might use it for the field. I mean, historically, like we've often used poo for fertilizer. Yeah. That's something that we've done for thousands of years. Not a lot less more recently. Like more recently, we've kind of gotten away from that in the last couple hundred years. But historically, yeah, we used we used it for the fields. But, you know, if you lived in, in a castle, you probably didn't have fields to till necessarily. Or maybe your serfs had their own poo uh, reserves or resources that they could use themselves. So you, you'd have... Yeah, these giant cesspits um, just roiling around um, right outside of your door. Which is just means the entire castle smelled of poo. Oh, like, yeah. Ugh. But it's like, I'm sure, I'm sure back then you probably just got used to the smell, or that's when they, all the, there's layers and layers of perfume. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> like is why they had perfume yeah, just, a lot of the time. It was just BL, people hygiene, like, not yeah. a thing. Yeah. People were yeah. taking baths like they do now, so I'm sure it's just like, you know, slathering yourself up with something to make you smell. <laughs> Not like shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think Hollywood has really kind of glorified a lot of the olden days where people are like, oh, the magical medieval castles, isn't yeah. that glorious? And it's like, you know, they were pretty unsanitary. I mean, you had rotten food, rotten animals, carcasses, you know, you had people throwing their shit out of windows. Yeah. So like not glorious, but everyone looks at it and goes, oh. Oh, to be, you know, a princess swept off by a knight, isn't that magical? And it's like, probably not. You probably died when you were 12 from, like, yeah. diarrheal diseases. So, mm-hmm. oh, well. Ugh. Oof. <laughs> I know. I'm the wet blanket of all people. No, it's okay. I'm, no, I'm, no. I don't want to live in a castle. I, just, <laughs> I have zero desire. <laughs> I just think they need to rewrite some of these movies to put a little more truth to them. I agree. My my partner rolls his eyes sometimes when I talk because I'm like, they didn't talk about toilets at all in this movie. And he's like, it's not relevant. I'm like, I want to know how they chat. Like, if we're watching <laughs> yeah. an old movie, what were they using? A cistern? Were they using a pot? Like, well, tell me more. But yeah, they don't go into it often. I always bring up, I know this isn't medieval times, but I always bring up that show Naked and Afraid because I'm dying to interview somebody from that show because they <laughs> barely talk about pooping on that show. Mm-hmm. And and it, they're there for 21 days naked and with, like, no place to clean up, no toilet paper. And so I'm so curious to, like, what ha- – and, like, there has – the only time they talk about it is when somebody's like, yeah, I've been constipated for the entire 21 days. And it's like, no, that's not healthy. Like, what's going on? So – yeah. I just wonder sometimes when they do those kinds of shows too, like, does everyone before they get filmed, there's like, you sit down in a room, they're like, here's the deal. If you have to take a shit, you got to like dig a hole. We don't want cholera outbreaks on this, oh, you sure. know, on this 
TV show, that's not sexy. So everyone, if you're going to, you know, take a dump, this is how we're going to do it. And, and just like, you know, how do you, how, like how, the lawyers, what do they have to do to make sure that they don't, you know, start creating uh, epidemics on these islands? I would bet a million dollars that that is the one, I mean, I've never watched the show. Ellen talks about it a lot though, but I imagine that that's the one topic or one thing that they have like a porter potty off to the side. No, they don't. Really? I just, I just like off camera. They're like, "Hey, look, if you got to that's the one thing we'll let you do." No, sometimes just, uh, these people drink the unclean water, and then they have explosive diarrhea, and they like really? they like, do it in the oh middle of the night, God. and they like try to run away from the camp, but they poop too close to the <laughs> camp, and then they have to move the camp, and it's like, and you got, can't poop near your watering hole, but they uh, like barely talk about it unless it's okay. like like crazy. I stand corrected. So, uh-huh. yeah. I want more. I want more details because they're they're basically naked and afraid is supposed to be like Adam and Eve, like the first of civilization. And how do you survive naked yeah. and cooking and like, you know, and you get like one survival item, which is usually a machete or a fire starter. I would say toilet paper. I need toilet paper. So do you? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I don't I'm not you... shitting for 21 days straight because I'm constipated. <laughs> I have, that, that just sounds like not fun. I have zero desire to do any of that. <laughs> Yeah, I like to watch. You will not be seeing me on that show. I I wouldn't last the first five minutes. I'd be like, I'm done. (laughs) Where do you tap out? Is there a bell I could ring or something? (laughs) You just you just do like a look around, and you're like, "Mm -mm." yeah, not for me. (laughs) And we've interviewed people Kim on the show that live with an outhouse, and they like dig a hole, and they have their outhouse for a while, and then they cover it up and move it to somewhere else, dig a new hole. We talked to somebody who had to actually clean out, like, what was it, 10 months worth of a cesspit? Yeah. And we and he was just like, I just got in there and did it. And I was like, no! Yeah. I'm like, like, yeah. Nope. <laughs> it's insane. That's pretty, so, that's pretty crazy. We take our toilets here for granted. I love my mm-hmm. toilets. Yeah. I so important. I have a funny friend. story if you want to hear oh, about. Yeah. Well, yes. I, I have lots of toilet stories, of course. Um, but, you know, I was in Ghana a couple of years ago for um, with my staff. I was doing work on water projects there. And we were in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of nowhere, Ghana. And, you know, we we're there for um, <laughs> one of our colleagues had passed away. And I was like, I need to go to the bathroom. It was a year and I had to, I had to pee, but I was like looking around and I was asking my colleagues, I was like, where can I go to the bathroom? And they were looking at me and they go, Oh, and they were like looking around everyone. And we're, I mean, it's 105 out, right? It's like really hot, really oh sunny. No. And they, um, you know, the women in the, in the office kind of got together and they're like, we will protect you. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> and so they like kind of made a wall around me next to someone's house. And they're like, there are no toilets in this village. So you're going to just have to pop a squat on this family's house and like hope for the best. And it was one of those moments of, <laughs> yeah, this is something that everyone needs to experience to appreciate when they have a toilet. Cause I definitely peed on myself. And when you said they made a wall, they made a wall of humans. Yeah. My colleagues like walled themselves around me. So people wouldn't watch the random white girl in Ghana peeing on someone's <laughs> house. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god. I mean look, you gotta do what you gotta do. There's no there's no I mean, you know. But uh that's I mean I'm sure that they're they're probably like, did she just say bathroom? Because <laughs> We yeah, gotta, they were like, you didn't under, you didn't read the memo. We're, we don't have toilets <laughs> yeah. for like 12 hours today. And I was like, did oh not get that God. memo. Still need to pee. Yeah. Oh, man. Woo. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's what I mean. But you're right. It's like you take it for granted. Like people just like, we don't have that here. So we got to build this wall now, this human wall. <laughs> Takes a this village. is why I keep my shiwi in my car. Do you know what a shiwi is? I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I don't have one. Um partly just because uh that i'm not sure how to how it would look for you know uh, a sanitation expert to come out in the middle of a community and be like i'm going to pee on a tree right here and you're all going to be okay with it um especially in certain places where it's like really conservative where like the women have to wear fully clothed and it's really yeah. hot and it's i'm just gonna whip this sucker out and you're gonna watch me stand up <laughs> and pee on a wall i don't think that would um would really endear me to my colleagues you're just like you're just handing shiwis out here you go here you go, here you go. take this <laughs> take yeah but it sounds like it 
men were able to pee wherever they wanted, it was the women that had it harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So For it's sure. true. That's yeah. why I would get a shiwi and I'd just pee up against a tree like a man and be like, fuck you, motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> I can't say that during my, my work, though. <laughs> yeah. Imagine they don't that. like that. Yeah, they're like, excuse me? <laughs> yeah. Do you know where you are? Yeah. <laughs> are the only things protecting you? Yeah. Why would you say that? <laughs> um, real quick, back to the um, the castle stuff. Oh, yeah, and yeah. I want to go back there, too. No, no, but when you're talking about the sewer, your, your sewer talk we were at, Virtually. Um, did you mention something about assassins coming up through the toilets? Because that was like, there was like something about. Oh, like, like yeah. You hear the it's, clanking it's, of it's the. So like, <laughs> yeah. If you, so there's, there's written tales that I've read in some of my research where there were places where they didn't manage their cesspits or their moats very well. And so they would have these pilings of waste that would kind of grow over time and if you are really um bold i think this happened in france at some point um at some castle where someone decided to climb the cesspit um and basically tried to siege the the castle that way kind of like coming up through the whole yeah it's um it's like a it's like a reverse shawshank redemption (laughs) i'm like oh my god yeah, because yeah. I remember you saying death by poo in the medieval. Then uh, we found I found this thing. I don't know if you could see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they like had like a bunch of famous kings or whatever, like a list of them that we posted on our Instagram because like knights would crawl up into their thing and yeah. kill them. I yeah, just, yeah. You, or you would just fall through the guard. Like I mean, you would. It's a big hole. Like what? What's holding you back? If there's a gusty breeze, or if you're off balance, or if you're really wasted, you know, <laughs> you're just gonna fall through it, and that's a really shitty way to die. Hor- yeah. Yes, <laughs> pun intended too. That's <laughs> yes. a horrible All way to it. die. Oh my god. We interviewed Tracy Piper, who I forgot where she grew up, but it was like an island um, near like. Uh, uh, near Puerto Rico, wherever. But she, when she was little, she was so tiny that she couldn't potty in her outhouse because her grandma thought she was going to fall in. That her grandma went out and got her a little bowl to potty in, so she could. And then she was like, "I had to learn how to clean out my own bowl into the outhouse." And Ugh. yeah, yeah. Um, and and kid, there are stories of like recent kids who you know try to go in an outhouse in like South Africa and they fell in and they died. Oh, my God. It's awful. Yeah. It's like that scene in Slumdog Millionaire where he gets locked in the yeah. outhouse and he has to jump into the hole and go through all the poop. How he even survived. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. The other old thing I wanted to talk about because you brought it up was how toilet paper is kind of a very new invention for us humans, which like is almost insane insane and all the different things we used to wipe with like my least favorite was the communal sponge on a stick <laughs> yeah it's pretty bad and it's when i bad. learned about that when we started this podcast i was like how do how is humanity even alive like <sighs> yeah. that's uh, not spite. a thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> Agreed. I mean, like plagues should have started right there. They like, did. They yeah. did. Serve, they did happen then. Yeah. 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 It's because a of a communal sponge. Communal. I mean, you should have your own sponge and your own stick. You shouldn't be <laughs> passing the stick to your friend who you're shitting literally right next to. There's someone's like father talking to a kid. Like, you th- we think we're some kind of rich family down the street. <laughs> we share this oh. shit stick. <laughs> We well, this think about it. We've kind of gone backwards a bit in, in that sense because people are now using these family cloths. And and they're very similar to poo sponge sticks Wait, other than... What? Do you what know? Did you say? I don't think I know about a, a, a family cloth, you said? Uh, uh-huh. Do you, oh, yeah. How so the- it's this idea that um, instead of using toilet paper, your family collects rags and you use the rags as toilet paper and then you clean them in the dish uh, or rather in the laundry oh. machine. Um, which yeah, no, I was trying to get. Uh, so I found a company that does reusable cloth ta- oh, toilet right. paper, <laughs> and I was trying to Forgot get them to that. interview. And I was emailing back and forth with the one guy. I was like, "I'd love to interview you guys yes. about this. I want to know." I, I, like, I'm all about the environment, but the one wonderful thing we have is that we can flush that paper down the toilet. Mm. 
Yeah. I'm I'm actually not pro the the family cloth no. idea cuz I mean, you know, when I've when I've looked at what other experts or experts that are, you know, into hygiene more what they say is, you know, if you put that stuff in the laundry machine, it stays in the laundry machine. So if you you know, are someone who has a lot of extra fiber and it gets stuck in the family cloth, you know, that stuff's (laughs) going to get kept in the laundry machine. So if you're not sterilizing it every time you use it, you're just kind of essentially doing the same thing as the Romans did with that poo sponge stick. No! Yeah, I'm not, I couldn't imagine growing up my dad being like, okay, we're going to start using these community uh, (laughs) shit racks. (laughs) I mean, I'd be like, well, I'm not. I'm gonna like emancipate myself somehow <laughs> because this is that crazy. That company though that I was emailing about, like the reusable toilet paper, oh. never got back to me. We were emailing back and forth, and then all of a sudden it was like silent. I completely forgot about yeah. that, by the way, because I think when you first told me, I was like, I have so many questions. The first one being why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. But I mean, historically, people used water, right? Like, which is a very hygienic way to do it. They still do it in a lot of the world. And otherwise, you know, what you would, I mean, again, if you had a lot of fiber, you might use like a rock or a seashell or something to kind of scrape things along. Again, I'm not advocating for these things, Um, but it's. There, there are things that people use to to get things moving. The toilet paper. The the nice thing about it was that you know, you could flush it and it would go somewhere, right? Or you could put it in the hole and you'd forget about it. And they, they do degrade over time. Yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of, you know, I I have a bidet at home. I have, Well, my partner and I both have bidets. So we, we use toilet paper, but not to the same extent because we are doing the washing. And then really, you know, I use the toilet paper if I, you know, have to dry myself or yeah. if I, I pee or something. And I think that works out a lot better, you know, and toilet paper is a relatively new concept but it's also wreaking havoc on the environment i mean a lot of the toilet paper we use is um you know pulling down virgin trees because that's the softest stuff so everyone wants the soft stuff on their butt but not realizing that their interest in keeping their butt soft and and precious is really damaging the environment yeah i like the gritty stuff so (laughs) And we both, Elle and I both have snap-on bidets as well, too. So we're, yeah. we're in that camp Super. for sure, yeah. Everyone should, if they're on a water-based system, bidet. On a yeah. compost system, it's a little more complicated. But even they have those travel bidets. So, like, mm-hmm. get one of those. You could fill up a water bottle and yeah. squeeze it down your butthole. Like, wash over wiping, we always say, is much better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I use the bamboo toilet paper, mm-hmm. um, but all I do is like use a little bit and just pat dry. Like mm-hmm. I'm more trying to wash that. But like going back to like she- seashells and rocks, and I even heard ceramic shards. Like yep. I don't even know how that works. Yeah. Corn like, husks. <laughs> yeah. Gently. <laughs> Gently. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Gingerly. I mean, I have hemorrhoid <laughs> problems. From just like mostly because of too much antibiotics, thanks to Lyme disease. But like, I can't even imagine these old people's buttholes. Like, they must have just been torn up. You can't, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I, I could imagine a corn, a corn husk being an um, option. <laughs> That's, but it can be. Yeah, I mean, I guess that. Yeah, at least it's biodegradable. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's imagine at least someone towards looking at it like, hmm, we can do better than this. I think <laughs> 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 someone's like, I've had enough. <laughs> no when months. Dave and I did, it was our third episode ever, and this is our ninety first. So it was a while ago. We did a whole episode on toilet paper, and we did the history of toilet paper. And I was like, maybe we should try these things. And then while I was saying, I was like, no, I like my butthole too much. I don't want to try <laughs> ceramic shards, I'm a good. communal sponge on a stick, <laughs> any of this stuff. No. Yeah. And you probably also don't have the right dexterity to do it. I think over time you learned how to not, you know, cut yourself with those things yeah. when you're cleaning. I would rather you not do this trial and error, you know, when you're not in your childhood and you don't have those nicely healing bodies. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have my 10,000 hours. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I'm just sticking no. to the bidet and a little bit of TP, so yeah. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> I endorse that. <laughs> Why is flushing toilet paper bad in a lot of countries? Yeah. Sorry. Are and I also. Into- 
Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, if you're wondering why I'm like playing with my eyes, something's in it, so I'm just playing with it. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Ask your question. <laughs> yeah. No. No. I. I in in here in the U.S. we flush toilet paper, but then you might go to some countries where they ask you, "Do not flush toilet paper. Put it in the basket next to the bowl." And so I'm curious to why that is. Um, yeah, so sewer systems in other parts of the world look different than what we have. So in, in the U.S., a lot of our sewer systems are a couple feet large in, in terms of diameter. So you have um, a lot of space um, and the water is often moving a lot because you have probably you have a laundry machine have some shower stuff you have a lot of things that are connected to your sewer to really push things along so it's kind of this always moving thing in other countries they don't necessarily have those same systems um, they probably <clears throat> don't have as much water going down to the drain but also their sewers tend to be much smaller so there's something especially common in latin america called a simplified sewer system and those are, are really um, they're kind of these like modular sewers that have these little pipes um, that get connected to each other. And uh, there's just not a lot of space. There's not a lot of wiggle room for the toilet paper to get stuck. So if you, say, um, are a really um, excitable person who uses a lot of toilet paper, that can easily clog your toilet, your sewer system, but also your communities because they're all connected to each other. Oh. Um, and, and trying to figure out how to get those choke points out of the sewer system can be quite gnarly and, and challenging. Oh. So a lot of places... Um, we'll just say, don't bother. We don't want it. We don't have the system in place. You might see that sometimes in older buildings as well, if their piping is quite old and is a little more fragile. Um, and it just, they don't want to have more fiber stuff in there that could get stuck. So you can, sometimes I've seen that in, in even, um, in Western places where it's just like, just here's the trash bin, just use that instead. And at the end of the day, the toilet paper goes to the same place. Um, no matter what, if you put it in the trash bin, if you put it in the toilet, it almost always goes to landfill. So it's not really like, you know, people are like, oh, it's so gross to put it in the trash bin. I'm like, well, I mean, that's because you're probably not doing a good job managing your trash bin. Like the overall, like it's kind of same, same, you know, if you have like a covered lid, like it, it does the same job. Hmm. Fascinating. I was in Puerto Rico for a wedding anniversary and, after um it was a hurricane maria i think they um instituted a whole like no flushing thing so i think it's got decimated from the storm so but that, that took me a minute I, there was one day i did i admit i did flush <laughs> i was a little drunk <laughs> and i kind of forgot but i mean overall yeah it's not that bad i mean at first you're kind of like what but i'm like all right well you know i do at, when in rome as they say <laughs> so i've been well i mean like there. I now know, thanks to this podcast and everything else, that flushing baby wipes is terrible. Um, but I learned about baby wipes like almost like 20 years ago because I went home to my parents' house and my mom was using them and they had a, a septic tank. So mm -hmm. it wasn't even a proper sewer. So it was like my mom's flushing baby wipes into a septic tank. Like this is now looking back, I know this is so bad on so many levels. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! And I remember you talking about septic tanks and it, how like that's just not really the best thing. It's not. I mean, they're trying to fix it. They're trying. You know, there are engineers out there who are trying to find better systems. So the the reason we don't like septic, or I don't rather, I don't like septic tanks, um, is they they still um, you know leach a lot of the germs and a lot of that not so great stuff that you could put in your in your water um, when you're doing your laundry or when you're doing your dishes and when you're shitting. That stuff, all of that liquid percolates into the groundwater. So. It will eventually get back into a waterway, um, especially if you don't have a lot of trees that are filtering the water system out. Um, so, and, and if you're like on well water, you know, that's particularly problematic. You know, they do have regulations about if you have a septic tank, how far it has to be from a well. I think that this is all kind of stuff that we're still trying to figure out, like how far does the damage go? I think it's still kind of unclear to a lot of places. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of septic tanks. And also, again, like when you need to empty it out, where does it go? That sometimes that's not so clear. Um, even in the US, sometimes you're just like, and, and a lot of people, you know, having septic tanks, they don't realize the maintenance that's required. So you'll, you know, go to a place particularly if you're like in a southern state, I've heard a lot of stories of places where 
they just haven't maintained their septic system, so they're broken and they have, you know, parasites riddling their fields just because no one bothered to oh think that the septic tank might be overflowing um, or might be broken. <laughs> That's yes. like a horror story. Yeah, yeah I, I grew up in the woods of Connecticut where we were the only house on the street and I had a septic tank and a well. And I think they were kind of close to each other. And I remember the only way that the septic tank got cleaned out is like a truck would come and suck it out like maybe once a year. I don't even think that much, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, when you, you during your talk, I was like, oh, my God, this is probably why my brother and I were so unhealthy as children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That is that's a nightmare. I'm so oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize they were like that, I guess bad as far as like leaching i thought i thought there was like more just like the potential to to explode was a thing but other than that they're the 100 percent safe kind of thing but that's oh. the potential to explode uh, well yeah i mean that well that's i would never get one based on that alone but that's <laughs> um my mother-in-law was saying oh they're really significantly safe. dangerous oh, if it'd be an exploding septic tank. but i just thought like the whole thing was like oh it just happens every like you know that that rarely happens and the, other than that they're totally 100 percent safe and i'm like oh i don't know about that now yeah, I mean, a lot of people, again, like if that's the only option you have, it's either, you know, shitting outside or getting a septic tank, get a septic tank. Like, I mean, it's better than nothing. But at the same time, you know, there are, is a lot of st studies being shown now that maybe that's not the best option. And maybe we need to look at, you know, maybe waterless systems are a better option if you're in the middle of nowhere um, and you're not relying on this water you know, to, to manage your waste in a way that's probably not the healthiest for your, for your like, you know, system, your water systems. Yeah. I wonder how I've been watching all these things about earth ships, like those homes that are built a specific way, like to use mm -hmm. the environment. And they have their part of their whole thing is like all the water in the house and the toilet go through this crazy filtration system. And then parts of it go through in the earth ships, like the, um, the uh, greenhouse, which you can grow your own stuff. So they're using a lot of that water to just actually, and f as the rest of it as fertilizer outside. And mm -hmm. one guy just called it the shit trees. He's called it his shit trees. Cause like, <laughs> um, so I always find that really fascinating. I like just, I like literally breaking everything down and just redistributing it to actually like work for you as opposed to like just storing it. Yeah. And that's a lot of um, places that are being really innovative when it comes to like wastewater and sewage. That's one of the things that they're really getting on is, you know, you can you can put the stuff in lagoons if they're managed well and they they well, they break down faster sometimes. But also you get the nutrients in the system. A lot of the plants, um, you know, if you're not eating the plants, you know, that stuff filters out the water really well in a way that sometimes, uh, you know, just can't happen in, in the same the same kind of way if you put it in a, in a treatment plant. So yeah. there, there are things that I've seen, you know, with especially these sludge lagoons and, uh, you know, buildings sometimes if they have like a closed loop system, they will have these nice constructed, you know, wetlands kind of in like your front lobby. And it's, you know, the used water or the used wastewater, you know, just getting nicely managed without having to have all of that equipment and all of the technical, you know, machinery to do the work that nature is going to do anyways, it just takes a little longer. Yeah. I've seen that like on different documentaries and TV shows about like self-containing houses that like the toilet water runs off into their actual vegetable garden. And then I, and then a friend of mine was in Cuba a couple of years ago and she told me that this guy's farm, they like took all the manure from the animals and actually had this way to turn it into methane gas to heat the house and to run the stove. Like, and I was like, that would be so smart if all of our toilets actually just made energy and so we had our own way of cooking our food with it you know yeah well you'd need a lot of cows to to make <laughs> sure that that would work out because we don't like we as humans we don't create the most amount of methane so like if you were to do this by yourself without animals it, it gets quite tricky to actually close loop your system um and and i will say like especially in urban areas um, it's really hard to make those kind of systems work and not be dangerous. So like, especially when we're talking about methane, which is extremely yeah. flammable, you know, and, and the, you know, a lot of people are, 
are pro compost and I'm pro compost in certain situations. But, you know, it, when I've done my classes in New York, a lot of people will come to me my after the classes and say, well, when are we going to get compost toilets in New York City? And I'm just like, ha ha. OK, I'm, I mean, it's nice that you think that's going to happen, but it won't because um, it's just so complicated. First of all, the logistics of emptying them, you know, so that's complicated. It's really expensive to have something that would be a municipal emptying system, I think, unless you had, you know, if you didn't have the sewer system, you know, then maybe you would start creating alternatives. But but also you have to think about the lowest common denominator of the people. Right. And like there are people that I know um, in my life that would not be able to manage a compost toilet without killing themselves, you know, and and we're not talking dumb people here. But like then you start thinking about everyone getting onto these toilets and, you know, my, my mentor says this thing. He's like, if you want a, a compost toilet, you need to understand that it becomes a family member. If you really want it to manage well and you want to make sure you don't like kill anyone with the with the output, you need to make sure it's managed every day, that you make sure that the pathogens are cleared out. I mean, it's a really, um, it can be quite an arduous process, especially if you're not someone who's like in this world yeah. or if you're just kind of thrown into it. So everyone's always like, compost toilets. And I'm like, hold on there. <laughs> yeah, there are other options. And, and of course the technology is getting better for compost toilets so that you can have those options. And I I, I am pro compost toilets, but again, there's like this thing where everyone's like, let's go. And I'm like, where? Like, yeah, like yeah, not yet. We're second. not there yet. Yeah. Uh, give us maybe 10 years and then we can start having these conversations. But right now the system we have is probably not going to change. Well, that goes into so many things I want to talk to about like the sewer system in New York. I live a half a mile from Newtown Creek and you were talking about how those eggs actually are, are really, really well made and how it like helps uh, you, you have to correct me like uh, um, take the sewer stuff within two weeks and just makes like clean water and filters everything out and puts everything where it has to where uh, usually it would take months for that to happen so the fact that it ha- is, is that quick is incredible but yeah. um, but we live in a major metropolis with millions of people living literally on top of each other using hundreds of gallons of water a day pooping, peeing, like, I heard a statistic that the average person in a lifetime poops the amount of poop that is the weight of three hippopotamuses, which is like almost like 9,000 pounds of poop in a lifetime. And then you compile that into apartment buildings with like, many people living on top of each other. It's just poop on poop on poop, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, and then you were saying that the sewer pipes in New York are like there's if you actually stretched it out, like what you can get to the moon and back like. Yeah, it, well, the we have seventy five hundred miles of sewer wow. systems under New York. And so it'd be New York to Delhi. It'd be like the flight oh, wow. direct. Wow. So, yeah, it's it's a lot. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, it's interesting. And, and yeah, poo will naturally decompose in about a year to three years depending on kind of where you are the circumstances um but the the idea of like having these treatment plants they do they just kind of expedite the system they basically digest your food for you again um because essentially you know you can't your your body is only so it's pretty efficient but not that 100 percent efficient so a lot of the stuff that they need to do is just kind of reprocess it and take out all those bugs um so i i'm I really like these treatment plants and especially there are fecal sludge plants, which are very similar. It's for, um, if you go to other countries, especially like in Kenya or if you go to India or Haiti, um, they will have these fecal sludge plants where it's, uh, communities that have dry systems, so they don't have sewers. So they use these compost toilets types, um, and they have to schlep out all the waste, which is very expensive, but this is what they do. And then you just have like heaps of poo, you know, across a, oh. like a football field being composted, which, and it's naturally being done. It just takes a long time. Yeah. So you just start having to grow it out. So I like the, the plants that are able to kind of like figure out how to make the system more efficient and how to speed it up because yeah, we do poo a lot. And I think <laughs> people really underestimate, you know, on a day to day basis, it's not that much, but if you start, you know, accumulating it over time and with population growth, we mm-hmm. have more people, we have more poo. Yeah. It starts becoming quite a, quite a mess. Yeah. And it's not like when I grew up in the woods of Connecticut and we were the only house on the street, I live like right. now on a block that like the entire street I grew up on has like probably hundreds of people making hundreds of pounds of poo. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did, we did a story, uh, <laughs> we did a story about a processing plant, I think in the Netherlands where they've, they've even got it down where they're taking like 
they can extract phosphorus from our poop. And, mm-hmm. they're, they're, and then actually reusing it for fertilizer and or um, concrete, which they've been using um, for a lot of like roadway stuff. So like, and they're, they're pretty much got it down to like, I mean, it's a science, but they've got it down. Like they almost completely recycled human waste to the point where we can reuse it again. And I'm like, I would love to see that here. I mean, I mean, I know it's an expensive process. I mean, p- politics notwithstanding. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's something I think it c- could be done and obviously it would help, help the world, especially with population growth and with yeah. food. And the fact that you can kind of use this stuff to like actually grow food. It's like a big giant circle. Well, if you really wanted to, you could pee in a bottle and then you could wait for two weeks and then your urine naturally sterilizes if you like put it out in the sun and it becomes basically um, like hardcore fertilizer, like oh. liquid fertilizer. So oh, there's, a, there's a, no. yeah, there's a really cool, um, if you're nerding out about this, there's a really cool um, organization in Vermont called the Rich Earth Institute. Mm-hmm. And they have a summit coming up in September um, that I'm going to be doing a little talk at. But their whole thing is if we could just stop putting the urine in the sewer system, that would make a world of a difference because that's automatic fertilizer, which we don't have to create. Because, you know, for, our urine has, um, you know, it has... Uh, in it, it has a phosphorus and it's already there and and urine unless you're sick is mostly sterile um anyways you just got to wait a little longer so that it like finishes sterilizing and then you just have all of this stuff and you've saved money you've saved you know the cost and the energy of producing more fertilizer wow. and you put on your tomatoes and the tomatoes are great wow i've never heard of this that is crazy that's amazing yeah mm-hmm. wow Good to know. I mean, I have no garden or anything like that. <laughs> right. Right. I was just my wife, my wife's like, why are there giant bottles of urine everywhere? And I'm like, yeah, look, in these New York tomatoes. It might be a bit tricky to start just <laughs> keeping that stuff. This food's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. Yeah. <laughs> or you just start bringing it to all of the like popped up uh, gar- like uh, rooftop gardens. You just oh, start yeah. coming with bottles <laughs> and you're like, I got fertilizer. Yes. <laughs> Here comes the pee man. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, right. You'll thank me later for this. <laughs> Excuse me. I, going back to Newtown Creek and um, sewer systems and all the rest of it, you talked about chlorine and a su- certain kinds of sewer bacteria that you have to put in that helps digest it. Um, I, how is chlorine like good versus bad? Like. I mean, like the only thing I have context of chlorine is like swimming in a pool, you know? Right. Well, it's it's um, this whole like, you know, live in moderation kind of thing. So chlorine, if you have a lot of it, will kill you. It will kill you. It's just it's just. But same with water, right? If you have too much water, it'll kill you. Um, but if you have, you know, a small amount of chlorine, what it acts as is a um, and, and there's like, you know, regulations about how much you're allowed to put in the system. But chlorine, when you dose it into water, um, can really become kind of residual um, bacterial killer. It, it sits in your system and it'll just kill what it can. It doesn't kill everything, of course, but it does a pretty good job kind of scrubbing the water so that you can drink it. Now, there's people like I've worked for places where they have problems with like the taste where people can really are really sensitive to the chlorine taste. So they don't like it. Um, you can filter that out with like charcoal, I believe, um, and other kind of filtration systems can take out the, the chlorine. But it, it's not bad if you um, do it right. And I think that a lot of people think chlorine is, you know, this devil because it's a chemical, but really everything is a chemical in the end of the day um you know and i'm also someone who thinks that fluoride is okay fluoride is a naturally occurring element um and you know there are places with too much fluoride in their water and there are places with not enough and there's kind of this middle ground um and these kind of things again it's like mitigation it's ways to kind of improve um not necessarily like prevent us from dying all the time. I think the chlorine definitely helps us with that, but it's really about improving our quality of life. Cause if, when we didn't have the chlorine in our waters, you know, we have dental issues, which cause heart issues, which causes like this ripple effect of health problems um, where, well, that's a fluoride. I'm sorry. I'm getting my chemicals mixed up for a second. <laughs> so that's a fluoride, but you have the chlorine, you don't want it too much, but it definitely, you know, prevents you from having a lot of diarrheal diseases. You know, you have that, you have certain water movements in the U.S. where people are trying to, like, go back to the source. Where I'm like, you don't know where the source is from. It might have cow dung in it, and then you will get sick. Yeah. So, you know. Or God only knows any other kind of animal yeah. dung in it. 
Yeah. So, you know, a lot of places um, where they don't have chlorine dosing in their water systems and in, in like, you know, low income, middle income countries, they will have little chlorine tabs. And that's kind of their like basic system of cleaning their water. If like, this is all we've got, we can, you know, we can filter it through like clay. So there's like some small, like low tech technologies where you can use clay and sand to basically filter out some of the bigger gunky stuff. And then the chlorine just kind of scrubs it clean. Again, like, just don't put too much in it. Let the professionals do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't manage the chlorine if I could help it. I don't, I, it's like you need training on how to do that properly. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's not, it's not bad. And, and the thing too, I think a lot of people get worried about these things is they're like, they're not telling us something, you know, they're not telling us something cause they just say the chlorine's in the water. They're, they're hiding something from us. And I'm like, believe me, I've taken the classes. Like I have the master's in it. It's cause it would bore you to death. Like you won't <laughs> want to learn about it. It's boring. You will not be interested. And there's like technical stuff you have to understand about how like bacteria works to get it. And frankly, probably don't have the time to learn it. So like, no, they're not they're just trying to like avoid you from you know falling asleep while they're trying to tell you to drink clean water don't worry about it there's microchips I, in it there's microchips <laughs> that's what that's what's that's in what it. they want you yeah, to say yeah. the chlorine that's what they want you yeah. to say that's why they put it in yeah oh my god and what and what about the sewer <clears throat> bacteria like yeah so so when you're at a wastewater treatment plant um it depends they i mean there's different ways to do wastewater treatment in different places um they all kind of resemble generally the same a lot of places use this stuff um called bugs i i can't remember exactly what these bugs are made out of formally but they're just these little bacterial bits um that they buy they're like industrially bought um stuff and they put it in the sludge so when you're in a wastewater treatment plant, you know, there's a couple of different steps to try to get the wastewater clean again. And part of the process is to really try to get rid of all those germs that are in the system. So these little bugs really like to eat those bits. So they all they do is they they find the the germs and the pathogens that are in the wastewater and they just chow down until they get nice and fat and then they basically get fat and happy and they sink to the bottom and go on a diet while they're just like pleasantly lazing around <laughs> and then they come back into the eating process and it's just a nice way to metabolize out um, a lot of those germs that would really kill you if they got into the waterways easily and yeah. a lot in a lot of ways it works very similar to a stomach where your body has these bacterial bits that you know break things down and digest things and you know take the nutrients out of the food and stuff it's it's very you know at a high level very similar because it's just breaking things down to a point where you know they can safely clean out the water with the other processes that happen in the plant like you know they might use uv they might use chlorine or they might have a couple other you know cleaning features uh so these bugs you know i i think of them as pac-man where they're like chomp 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 <laughs> and they just they just really like to gorge on bacteria and it's great because it makes it so that we can end up eventually getting the water back into the waterways which is the goal that's awesome because i remember watching um about Bill Gates reinventing the toilet and how he made something that like the the little bacteria, the Pac-Man eat in this thing. And then the byproduct is energy and clean water. And it's like, mm -hmm. that's, it's like toilets and poop are not the enemy. They could, the good stuff can come out of it. Totally. Yeah. And, and there are some really cool toilets that are coming out that are people, people are trying to find new ways to kind of, make us stop saying the word human waste and maybe more human resource just because there is a lot of stuff in our in our human cells that we excrete that is really important and necessary to the environment but we just haven't harnessed because we kept on getting grossed out by it um and it's like well we're grossed out by it but like do we have to be grossed out by it yeah no, it's fascinating. Well, that's why we have this podcast and <laughs> the only time we get kind of grossed out is when we have like dominatrix on who talk about their poo guys and Force consumption, which is really intense. That sounds intense. <laughs> I think the word looking for is I, disgusting. I, 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 again, I'm like someone really tolerant. I feel like I, if I were to hear it, I would have probably like braced myself and be like, It's a lot. Okay. It's a I'm lot. Ready? I was like, Oh. <laughs> Dave was visibly sweaty yeah. during that entire interview. Yeah. It wasn't my. It, um... <laughs> if anybody needs to listen, it's episode 10. Uh, and yeah. if anybody has any questions or comments or anything, please 
email us at heypoopypodcast at gmail.com and we can send you more information on Kim and on um, at, at everything about Flush. Plus, we have our hotline number now, which is 203 203- 998-5579 and you could call us and leave a message and ask us questions or tell us your sewer poop stories we love and we want to hear it yeah it's a brand new hotline we'll uh, read it on the air or play it yeah. we, can da- we can download all the uh, voicemails so it's yeah very, very 2020 <laughs> and I have one last question unless Dave you have something to interject or Kim if you want to um fill us in with anything that we're missing but why is it called a turkish toilet why are the squat toilets called turkish toilets did I they start in turkey mm, i mean they definitely had tur- um you know squat toilets way back in the day in turkey i think i'm not quite sure i think a lot of it has to do with a lot of um europeans i think their first interaction with a squat toilet wasn't turkey um, and I know they had them in France for a while as well. I think it's just, um, I think the alliteration makes it nice. I think that people like to think of it as something over there, you know, that's not where they are because it seems, right. you know, different. I, I, you know, it's, it's the same, like, we, I mean, why do we call it French fries? I have no idea we would call them French fries, but you know, <laughs> it, it's like a, that idea of like something from el- somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. So it just that's not the on. formal answer, but that's it. I guess also I have also, you know, the poo shelf in Germany. Why is that? Yeah. Oh, I think that's a Freudian thing. They put a shelf in? Well, there, there's story? kind of this, um, I think there's this kind of culture from, you know, from what I've understood from my friends and from reading is there's kind of this um, scatological interest in Germany where people are very curious to understand their health by their poo so the shelf is kind of a way for them to observe and to assess in a very analytical way what is happening with their bodies so it gives them this way to to look at it to understand what's happening before they flush it down yeah that's um, a, a, a inspection <laughs> yeah it's the inspection unit which i'm i'm like i don't need to i don't need a shelf <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like, just peer down and i'm yeah. like okay we're fine yeah i'm good <laughs> no blood <laughs> Good. Yeah, I like the water that in enga- like encases our poo here on this side of the pond. I don't need it to be like suspended on a shelf with like very little to no water. It's just no bueno. Yeah, I'm not into that either. So I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, people from Germany. <laughs> yeah. But if anybody from Germany would like to discuss this or debate the ads, uh, please let us please, know. Please, yes. We, we want to know. know from you. <laughs> oh, wait. I lied. I have more questions. Eels in the sewer. During your talk, that was so interesting. Like, because we hear sewer rats, but you were like, no, there's no such thing as sewer rats. But there is such thing as sewer eels. Yeah. Well, there's some there's some rats in the sewers or like I can't say there's none. Um, but yeah, the, so especially in the in the northeast of the U.S., um, eels are endemic to a lot of the, the marshlands in the area. And uh, they really like eating sewage or, you know, oh. just waste in general. They're bottom feeders, you know, no yeah. pun intended. Um, that's that's just what they are. And so they they can be found in sewers. They swim in. And especially if you're in a place where, you know, there are sewer pipes in a wetland area or like a watery area, it's really easy for them to slip in. And kind of go to town. Eel is my fa- my favorite things to eat when I go to a sushi restaurant. And now I'm like rethinking my whole. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're not getting the eels from like Newtown Creek. So. I agree. But now it's, it's just tainted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, did you get this eel from the se- um, sewer? No. <laughs> well, guy- that's like those huge oysters in New Orleans. Like that's right there in the bay where like there's oil spills and all the other crap. And it's like. Those oysters don't get that big. They're bottom feeders, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, like. Oh, thank God I don't eat oysters. <laughs> <laughs> and they they have the oyster program in New York City now, so they mean? they they put the oysters. So they're not edible oysters. Like you don't you won't eat them. But they put oysters um on the on the docks and on the harbors oh, yes, of I've seen the that. city. Yeah. yeah, as like a filtration system because they're really good at cleaning the water. Wow, that's yeah. cool. I've seen that. Yeah, actually. don't eat them. Blech. No thanks. 
The pearls oh. that are coming out of those oysters. Oh my god! That's curious. <laughs> no. Oh my god! That's 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 a nightmare right there. You get like a pearl in the shape of an IUD, oh. like because somebody's oh. IUD got flushed yeah. down, and <laughs> they're like, "That's a special it's, delicacy." Yeah, it's magic. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, and then the last, my favorite thing. We we need to go back to talking about fatbergs. Mm. What would you like me to say? <laughs> Tell, educate the audience. Like we know they're bad. We know they're evil. Have you seen any? Like since you've worked in sewers, like besides photographs. Like when you talk to cities, when they're like, we have a fatberg problem. Do you help them? Like. Like, I know New York has a huge problem with people dumping their oil down the toilet and the baby wipes. And, like, it looks like something out of Ghostbusters. It's so evil. Yeah, they're pretty gross. I, I have not personally gone to go see a Fatberg. I don't think I have the security clearance to do that. Um, <laughs> it's just you have to go in a sewer. And, I mean, those are really, like, dangerous things. So Fatbergs, you know, they're essentially composites of fat, oil, and grease and everything else people flow down, flush down the toilet they shouldn't. Um, they just kind of grow over time. And especially if you put a lot of binding agents like floss and Kleenex and tampons and wet wipes down the drain, you just start getting these mounds of fat that really clog up a system like you would clog an artery with fat. So it's a very, you know, kind of similar issue, only instead of having a heart attack, your sewer system has a sewage spill. Um, so they're, they're not great. Um, and they're, they've grown in the last 10 years because um, of access to wet wipes and people just being a lot more careless about what they put down the drain. Um, so you start seeing them, especially in the UK, they're really big there because they don't have grease traps regulations in the same way. Um, so you have a lot of people, you know, putting butter and and you know bacon grease down the drain and that stuff gets wow. clogged up and yeah people do it still it's it's unfortunate but um yeah what that's do, when a city finds a huge fatberg what do they do to get rid of it oh um blunt force so <laughs> it takes a while i mean you can't just it's hard to liquefy fatbergs first of all because no one's quite sure what's in the fatberg all the time uh -huh. so you know if they're, they're heterogeneous they don't really um you know have one defining feature so you can't just put anything down there to liquefy it because you don't know if that'll be dangerous um and so what they end up having to do usually Ooh. is taking out chunk by chunk um, through the sewer system, there's usually some sad person who has to go down and, you know, put on the hazmat suit and take a shovel and just bluntly pull it out without trying to break the sewer system. I saw a New York Times article about Fatbergs and this, they, they showed you know, someone down there doing that. And just it was like a nightmare. Like I've never seen anything like that before. And the poor person that yeah has to go clean it out. I, I asked for like quadruple pay, quadruple yeah. overtime. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just like hazard pay. Oh, totally. Oh, God, I, I want to. We need to interview one of these people. Yeah. I need to talk to them. Yeah. You should find someone in the UK because they have a lot of fatbergs. Ooh. Wow. A lot. Well, Many. Post, post pandemic field trip. Yeah. I don't know if they let you see them still. I mean, so like the no, no, not of... see them, but like find somebody to interview and in oh, UK. like we yeah, have to fly over there. Yeah. I mean, we could do it like via Skype, obviously, but mm -hmm. I want I want all the gritty details. Like, you call the Museum of London because um, they they have a piece of Fatberg on dis like in their archives and they had to take <laughs> it off of they they had it on display and they had to take it off a of display because it started to um, mutate. What? Yeah. It's like so a tumor. They, they Yeah. Well, so it started to like sweat and change color and I think <gasps> it started um it started hatching eggs <gasps> or something. Oh my god. That is um that is insane. Oh <laughs> But they, they still have they have a, a fat can that you can you can watch it online live whenever you want because it's they're still not sure if it's going to change again. So they have a camera on their website what? where you can watch the fat burg and see if it's gonna change. And I guess there's people who go watch it regularly and are like, Oh, it's sweating again or oh <laughs> you know, this thing this thing happened. What are these eggs? I don't know. I don't know if I wanna know yeah, right me now, either. to be honest. Oh my god. That is unbelievable, man. <laughs> that, is that is terrifying. That's like alien. <laughs> yeah, that's like a horror movie. Like what if like, we, we what, 
what if we created like a new kind of weird alien species that we don't know anything about? It's like they're they're hats from Fatbergs. That'd be horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. We are officially we are in the medieval times movies. We are in sci fi like horror movies. Oh my god. Yeah. This is this is this is actually making me like super germphobic right now. <laughs> like just hearing that story and it's just, it's they had to take it away because it was sweating and mutating. Oh my god. Oh my <laughs> Yeah, that's god. um that's incredible. <laughs> oh, oh. I want to know what the eggs were. Well, we got to find out. Uh, they look. might tell you. On, I haven't checked in a while, but they might tell you all of the bits that have happened to it if you go to the the Fat Camp site. And it's where's it again? The, the what museum? The the University of London, I believe. Or, I'm sorry, the Museum of London. Oh, museum of London. Um, yeah, I have the link somewhere. I can I can share it. Nice. I feel like this is something that every human being needs to watch so they could stop flushing baby wipes and shit like. It yeah. should be on every like that should be just like for clockwork the, orange everyone yes. and yeah. it should yes. be on the front page of the New York Times. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> every day. Yeah. Every day. Fatberg news and Fatberg news. <laughs> oh my it's god. Shane's green today. <laughs> We're like, what? <laughs> yeah, forget those bear cams out in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> or panda cams. I want the Fatberg cam. <laughs> Otter cams, yeah. fat cams, same, same. Yeah, you know? Come on. <laughs> well, that, I mean, I have nothing else. I am my, my, I'm like gobsmacked, as they say, <laughs> in London. I mean, that's just like, I can't stop thinking about this. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if I you have, didn't even sleep tonight. Yeah. Like, it's kind of terrifying. <laughs> wow. Ellen, do you have any other questions for uh, for Kim? I, w- I went through all my notes and I like, I pretty much landed on everything. Nice. Of course, like I'll probably think of many more things. And as I said in the beginning of this interview, I could keep you Kim for like a million hours because. This is- <laughs> we'll have to and get- some people like I jumped right into a lot of topics. Like everybody, please tune into one of her talks. Like I, I. I I'm I'm literally my questions are going off both of the talks that we saw so like you need to pay attention for sure it, yeah well I say we so then I say we I, I would love to have you back on again I mean for sure yeah I'd be happy um, to this is fun this was like amazing I'm like still like processing but amazing stuff <laughs> um, and I just say I, I, I have a therapist number if you need <laughs> <laughs> I might actually need that contact um, you you thought Mistress Ashley was in yeah bed. that that this, this February thing is like gonna it's gonna mess with me for a while. I mean, one of I, our last interviews, um, Kim, we interviewed this guy who has this uh, app that's like it's like a dating app, but for people who fist and like that oh, was intense. That was intense. <laughs> Actually, you know what a good show would be uh, Kim with I forgot his name now. Um, the Brandon Poopers guy. Oh, the Poopers yeah. Guide. There's a, yeah, um, yeah. I forget his name. I apologize. He's got an app um, website called the Poopers Guide, which is like a handy New York City app as far as like clean, free, or cheap bathrooms that you can use. Um, yeah. Public, m- ah. Going into your he public has a map and he rates thing. all the bathrooms in yeah. New York. And oh, cool. And it's a little Google thing you can like just add to your um, Google preferences, and it's amazing. So it gives you like locations, um, ratings that he goes through. Oh. It is really fascinating stuff. So. Um, that yeah, that'd be good, cool. Be a good tag team show, maybe in the future. I thought you were gonna say the guy from Rieger, the no. fisting guy, and Kim <laughs> together. <laughs> the, the questions we begin. I'll get really quiet. Like, yeah, there's, there's like a weird like game show moment. Where we're like, okay, coming from. <laughs> <laughs> okay, medieval Europe. Okay, fisting. Let's yeah. talk about that now. <laughs> we're like, and go. No, no, no. Um, oh. I'm gonna send on Skype right now to you guys the fat cam link. Oh, Ooh. please. Yes. Oh, there it is. Oh, my God. Excellent. Well, I was going to read a news story, but honestly, I just want to leave it at the fat bird <laughs> thing because this is... That fat cam is its yeah, own news. Yeah, exactly. I think the story I have is... I mean, it's it's funny, but I don't know. I just want to kind of end on the fat cam thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so good. Oh, my God. It's, it has all my emotions are like all over the place. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, unless, unless you have any other thing you want to mention, Kim or Ellen, I mean... Kim, do you want to tell, like, where can people find you? Sure. Um, they can find me on www.flushwash.org. Nice. 
and I'd be happy to come talk about toilets with you guys another time if you guys want me to tag team oh, or whatever. Amazing. Yeah, we definitely you're going to be our new uh, our new correspondent or something because <laughs> <laughs> we just learned so much. I was sitting there. I feel like I'm like this. It was so everything was so fascinating. I loved it. Really, really. Thanks again for coming on the show, though. Yeah, you're, thank you're you for having amazing. me. You're amazing. I guess uh, the only question I would ask you is, how do you hang your toilet paper over or under? Over. <laughs> I'm an under. I, I feel like we need to know from each guest because I'm going to compile like because Dave thinks he Dave is in the under camp. I'm in the over camp. And so I want to to like figure out, especially once we have like 100 guests, that like what the average is of over versus under with our guests. Uh, it's definitely over for sure. Like, yeah, it's the majority, majority. But he thinks it's like 95 percent. I think it's like 80 percent. So oh. yeah, it's yeah. a lot. We did a whole episode about over versus under. People did papers about this. <laughs> they did. Yeah, I've seen some like, of them. So funny, but yeah, the data's out there. <laughs> well, um, we're gonna wrap this amazing episode up. Kim, thank you so much for being on the show. I mean, yeah, really, thanks really, for taking really, me on. You're, you're oh my god, fantastic. so much information. Thank you. <laughs> So, Thank you for absorbing it. Yes, we did. I'm just like like very, a communal sponge on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe, I guess. <laughs> or those That's little. That should be our night, new tagline for the podcast. We're a communal sponge on a stick. Oh no! <laughs> People be like, I'm not listening. I do not support this. <laughs> oh my god. Well, anyway, um, stay safe out there. And again, thanks again. Thank so you much. so much, Kim, and happy pooping, everybody, and toot, toot, toot. Hey, Poopy Podcast is brought to you by Perfect Four Entertainment, produced by Dave and Ellen, with executive producer Stormy Leather, edited by me, Dave. For more information, go to heypoopypodcast.com for episodes, merch, and more. Follow us on Instagram at heypoopypodcast and Twitter at heypoopy. Theme song by Jordan Pearlson. Hey, poopy.